Somebody asked, uh, there was a comment under one of my videos uh, asking me to do a video on a substance called saw palmetto. So uh, I'm going to do this video on saw palmetto, give you a little basic information about it. Saw palmetto is, uh, it, it's basically, well, I keep saying that word basically, forget basically. Saw palmetto is a dwarf palm tree. In other words, it's a miniature palm tree. It's native to the southeast regions of North America. You see a lot of them in Florida, Georgia, and the Bahamas. The, uh, the bot botanical name is Sorana repens, and uh, it grows in sandy soil. And the, re the reason it's called saw palmetto is, is because it has uh, sharp, almost saw-like teeth on the stalks that attach the tree's leaves to its stem. Uh, it, uh, the saw palmetto pr uh, tree produces dark berries. Now, the berries are from the salt palmetto are the source of supplemental salt palmetto. Uh, it's, it has a uh, reputation uh, among uh, indigenous people for its nutritional, diuretic, sedative, aphrodisiac, and cough-reducing effects. Uh, the, the, uh, as I said, the supplement form uh, usually oil extracts of the fatty portions of the dried berries. Now, it's important if you ever get, uh, contemplate using a saw palmetto supplement, make sure that it contains the oil extract because that's where the active ingredients of saw palmetto. Some of the saw palmetto supplements I've seen do not, have, are, are, do not contain the oil extract from saw palmetto or the fat that's found in natural in the saw palmetto, and those things have absolutely no effect whatsoever. The supplements normally contain 75 to 90 percent fat depending on how uh, the extraction me method used to obtain the uh, the oil from the salt palmetto plant. Uh, they also contain a couple of uh, beneficial compounds, antioxidants like vitamin E and others uh, that are not, uh, not, not in that great abundance in the actual uh, raw fruit. Now the big reputation of salt palmetto is that it, it's very good for prostate gland health. Uh, there's a condition that men get, particularly when they get older, called benign hyp uh, prostatic hyperplasia, also called BPH. Uh, it's an enlargement of the prostate. The problem is the prostate gland surrounds the urethra, which is the tube that takes basically urine, exits the body through the urethra. And uh, if the uh, prostate gland hypertrophies, it gets too large, it literally squeezes on the urethra. This can cause problems with uh, urinating and, and other health problems. 75% of men in their 70s have benign prostate hyper, uh, hyperplasia, BPH. Uh, and as I said, if it gets, if the gland gets, if the gland gets too large, uh, a man will not be able to empty his bladder. It also causes, increases the frequency and urge to urinate also causes, for example, uh, nighttime, excessive nighttime urination, which can dis sleep, uh, disrupt your sleep and cause problems related to lack of sleep. So one can lead into the other. Uh, generally, medical, uh, according to the medical texts, existing medical texts, uh, uh, prostate uh, gland enlargement is caused by uh, a byproduct of testosterone hormone metabolism called dehydrotestosterone or DHT. The way that uh, salt palmetto works is it, it inhibits the enzymes that convert testosterone into DHT, namely 5-alpha reductase. This is the exact mechanism that's also used by a drug that also treats benign hyperplasia, benign prostate hyperplasia, called uh, it, it's called finasteride, available as Proscar or Propecia. Propecia is a, a common medication, one of the only approved medications to, to treat male pattern baldness. Uh, a lot of men, however, claim to have sex problems or sexual problems after using uh, finasteride. That includes inability, or erectile dysfunction, and also a loss of sex drive. But according to the medical literature, this only happens about 7% or 5 to 7% of men who use finasteride. Uh, a lot of the current thinking about this so-called finasteride syndrome, as they call it, uh, is that, uh, in fact, a lot of men who've taken finasteride, even when they got off finasteride, they claim 
that they still don't have any sex drive, still have erectile dysfunction. Uh, a lot of uh, researchers who've looked into this feel that a lot of this has to do with the basic, let's say, neurological or mental uh, system of the person involved. In other words, if you have a tendency towards depression, when you take finasteride, it can actually exacerbate, make the testosterone worse. I mean, uh, the depression worse, which will actually possibly cause some of the sexual problems related to finasteride use. In other cases, it has to do with uh, finasteride uh, interfering with, uh, by lowering DHT, it lowers it by about 60%. Unfortunately, uh, DHT in the brain is converted to certain other chemicals collectively known as neurosteroids. Some of these neurosteroids like allopregnolone have very potent antidepressant effects. And uh, by lowering these neurosteroids in the brain, again, in some men, not all, it can cause sexual problems. Now, well, now, where uh, soy, soft palmetto comes in is thought to be like a natural alternative to finasteride. Um, BPH itself, uh, renine prostate hyperplasia, it's part of a larger group of lower urinary tract syndromes collectively known as LUTS, L-U-T-S, and that, that this involves bladder, urethra, and prostate problems. Uh, LUTS can affect both men and women. Several studies have looked at soil palmetto's effect on LUTS. The uh, findings have been mixed and paradoxical. Uh, some studies, earlier studies showed that soil palmetto can increase urine uh, flow and reduce nighttime urination in men with BPH, both when used alone or in combination with, with traditional drug therapy like finasteride. But the uh, a Cochrane review, these are these reviews that look at um, kind of, uh, they look at past studies of various drugs and treatments. Uh, it's considered the highest standard of evidence in health uh, healthcare. They looked at tall, soft palmetto and they found it showed little improvement in treating LUTs. On the other hand, two reviews note that a daily dose of 320 milligrams of a pr proprietary supplemental form of soil palmetto called permixin, usually sold in Europe under that name. Uh, it, it's more effective than a placebo at improving urine flow and reducing nighttime urination. Uh, again, a lot of the problems come with soil palmetto not working uh, come, come because either the dose is too low, the actual recommended dose for treating prostate problems is 320 milligrams a day, and it has to be from, again, the oil-based soil palmetto form, the one that has the oil. Uh, one of the active ingredients in the oil form of soil palmetto is a uh, saponin called beta, beta, uh, beta cytosterol. That, that's thought to be the active ingredient that actually interferes with DHT production. Uh, now, DHT uh, or dehydrotestosterone is also associated with male pattern baldness. In fact, it is the cause of male pattern baldness. Now, not all men get male pattern baldness. It depends on your genetics. Some men produce the same amount of dehydrotestosterone, do not become bald. Others do, it has to do with certain genetic patterns. But they do know that the actual immediate cause of male pattern baldness is in fact dehydrotestosterone. What it does is it takes the hair shaft, the, uh, the hair, and it turns normal hair into miniature hair. If you look at a man who's completely bald, if you look real close, you'll see these tiny little blonde hairs. They're called vellus hairs. And um, this is what, uh, and that's what happens with a uh, androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness. It converts normal hair into miniature hair. And the thing that does this again is testosterone. Now you take a drug like finasteride or salt palmetto, and it's thought to inhibit the enzyme 5 alpha ductase, which converts testosterone into dehydrotestosterone. And if you reduce dehydrotestosterone, you're not gonna lose your hair because you're cutting off the main cause of male pattern baldness, which is dehydrotestosterone. So even if you have the genetics for it, you'll stop losing your hair. As far as restoring hair, uh, personally, my experience and uh, what I've seen in men who've used uh, finasteride is it's more, or possibly saw palmetto, is that it's more effective at stopping male pattern baldness, in other words, preventing further hair loss. But once you've lost a good amount of hair, uh, the salt palmetto doesn't really do much. However, I believe there's some research showing if you combine, let's say, salt palmetto or, or a low dose finasteride 
with another drug called uh, minoxidil, which comes in a topical form. A newest studies show that very low oral doses of minoxidil also do this. Minoxidil might have an effect of helping to restore lost hair, especially in the crown, back of the head. Uh, it's, it's new research. They don't really know if it's confirmed yet, but uh, that's something to, uh, for men to think about if they worry about this type of thing. Uh, one small study showed that a daily dose of only 200 milligrams of sulfamedo, uh, which was taken with separate supplement of beta cetosterol, which to me doesn't really make sense since beta cetosterol is in the oil-based sulfamedo supplements. But anyway, they combined 200 milligrams of sulfamedo with beta cetosterol. And in this particular study, it reduced hair loss in men with male pattern baldness by 60% compared to another group that took a placebo. In another two-year study, men who had male pattern baldness were given 320 milligrams of salt palmetto, which as I said earlier, is the standard dose, uh, or, they were, or they were given finasteride, which is of course works the same way. By the end of the study, one-third of the men who were given salt palmetto reported an increase in hair growth, but the salt palmetto was only half as effective as finasteride in promoting hair growth. But as I said, finasteride's not that great at promoting hair growth. It mainly works, it does, it's very effective for stopping hair loss. In other words, if you're going bald and you, and you start ta taking uh, finasteride, uh, you will immediately stop the hair loss. If you stop taking the finasteride, the hair loss will return because again, it's caused by genes and DHT and they will return to normal values when you want you to stop taking the drug. And by the way, the standard dose of finasteride or the uh, trade name is Propecia. It's available in a much cheaper form in generic, as a generic. Uh, the usual dose is one milligram a day. Uh, the dose of finasteride to treat prostate problems as, as uh, a Proscar is five milligrams a day. But the one milligram dose of finasteride, which is usually prescribed to treat male pattern baldness, I believe is unnecessary uh, because again, finasteride reduces DHT by 60%. I believe that you don't need, you only need a slight decrease in, in uh, DHT to halt male pattern baldness. So in case you're worried about side effects and you wanna try uh, finasteride, I think you could get away with taking half a tablet, which would be uh, 0.5 milligrams. I think it'll work just as well and some studies show that. And another alternative, if you want to use finasteride for male pattern baldness, is they have topical forms which are sprayed directly on your scalp. They are not absorbed. Uh, uh, they have not not absorbed systemically, so there's no you don't get the side possible side effects of finasteride, but you do get the the uh, hair loss prevention benefits. But the uh, topical forms are about maybe nine to ten times more expensive than the usual oral generic forms. Uh, so uh, another small study showed that a small increase in hair count and about half the men who were treated with a sole palmetto hair lotion uh, but the, there was unfortunate other ingredients in the lotion so you can't really say it was directly from sole palmetto there's a couple of other potential benefits of uh, sole palmetto uh, some uh, in vitro or test tube research shows that taking the uh, proprietary sole palmetto supplement for mixin uh, reduced markers of inflammation in prostate cells, uh, uh, but uh, that would, uh, in other words, it would uh, reduce prostate gland inflammation. Uh, some other studies show that promexin can also protect libido or sex drive and even uh, help uh, maintain fertility. Uh, the usual conventional drug therapy for uh, benign prostate hypertrophy and lutes, unfortunately, such as finasteride, have shown negative effects on sexual function in men. This doesn't occur with saw palmetto at all, even though the mechanism appears to be the same. I'm not sure why. A review of 12 randomized controlled studies compared permixin with the conventional drug therapy as a treatment for benign pr uh, pr prostatic uh, hypertrophy and lutes. And though, though both produce negative side effects on male sexual function, the saw palmetto supplement led to smaller drops in libido and lower impotence compared to the conventional drug treatment. As I said, 
the, the, there's much greater chance of side effects with the standard drugs compared to the herbal salt palmetto. Uh, test tube research also suggests that salt palmetto can help slow the growth of certain cancer cells, including prostate cancer. Uh, this is a, just uh, new research. And nobody really knows if it's, uh, you know, if it's actually true yet. It needs more study. As far as the safety and side effects, uh, there's not much information on the safety of salt palmetto. It's generally, it's considered safe for most people. Uh, if you overdose, if you take, you know, as I said, the standard dose for salt palmetto is 320 milligrams. If for some reason you want to take like five, six times that amount, which a lot of people probably would, then you, you, could, uh, you, could expect, you could expect side effects that include diarrhea, headache, fatigue, decreased libido, sex drive, nausea, vomiting, and vertigo. Uh, but these t side effects usually are mild and they are reversible. All you got to do is cut back the dosage or get off it. Uh, some possibly more serious side effects include liver damage, pancreatitis, which is an inflammation of the pancreas, bleeding in the brain, which could be a stroke, and death have been reported in isolated cases, but it's, it wasn't clear in, in those cases if, if the people that experienced those side effects were taking things other than salt palmetto. All they knew is they, that so, they were taking salt palmetto, but they might have been taking other much more dangerous substances. There's two case studies that reported young girls experience hot flashes, which is what they call vasomotor instability, usually caused by a uh, lack of estrogen which causes a dilation of blood vessels. It feels like a lot of heat, feels very uncomfortable. Usually happens in postmenopausal women who are deficient in, to, uh, in estrogen. But uh, the two case studies involve young girls who experience hot flashes when they're given so, uh, salt palmetto supplements to treat hair loss. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly how to explain that one. Uh, some people think that salt palmetto could be linked to birth defects and it might even prevent the normal development of male genitalia because the male genitalia is stimulated by DHT. If you block DHT, the male genitalia do not develop uh, properly. Uh, I discussed that in an, art uh, in an article in my Applied Metabolics related to Finestra. I'm not going to go into it here. But the point is, uh, you shouldn't give soap and metal to children or pregnant or breastfeeding women. Uh, so uh, what else can I say? Uh, as I said, the dose is uh, 320 milligrams of the oil extract. Uh, and I think, I think that's about it, really, what, I, what, what, I'll, what I can say about saw palmetto. So, you know, it may or may not work. Uh, uh, the problem with saw palmetto supplements as an herbal supplement is the same as with other herbal supplements in that there are very often with herbal supplements, there's a lack of what they call standardization. When you take a drug, a USP drug, that's U.S. pharmacopoeia, uh, each, uh, it's the law federal law that every dose of the drug has to have the same amount of active ingredient. Unfortunately, that law is not, uh, is not, does not uh, apply to uh, a lot of food supplements, uh, especially herbal supplements. Herbal supplements, uh, they've done quantitative analysis of uh, herbal supplements. They found that sometimes one pill might have three times more ingredient than the next pill in the same bottle, or might not have any active ingredient. And that explains the often contradictory results you see when they've uh, done studies of some of these herbal supplements, including saw palmetto. A lot of the negative effects of saw palmetto might have occurred because it didn't have the active ingredient, which I said, as I said earlier, always occurs in the fatty portion of the berry, the saw palmetto berry. That contains the active uh, ingredients that, for example, interact with dehydrotestosterone. So again, if you're going to try salt palmetto, make sure you get it from a reputable company where it has a standardized dose of salt palmetto. And don't get any water extracts or anything like that. They're garbage. They will not do anything at all. They're completely, they're <laughs> waste of money. They will do nothing. Make sure it's the oil, uh, the oil-based salt palmetto. So if you want more information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research you can use today. Uh, ergogenic age, hormonal therapy, uh, women's health and fitness, uh, what else? Supplement science, 
which supplements work, which ones don't. Uh, you'll only see this type of information in Applied Metabolics, which is my publication, www Applied Metabolics, because everything is commercialized today. I'm, I'm telling you, everything, most of the YouTube videos, the websites, everybody's selling something. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with selling something. I, I was just telling somebody earlier today, I think people who do YouTube videos, you know, just to see see themselves in, on YouTube or hear themselves talk, that makes no sense to me. If you're going to go, YouTube itself is making money off your videos. By attaching ads to your videos, they're making money off you. So why can't you make money off your YouTube videos? I have no problem with people selling things on their YouTube videos. In fact, I think that's smart. Of course, the only thing I sell on my YouTube video is my newsletter, is my applied metabolics. I'm not selling anything else. But here's the point. The people that are selling a lot of these other uh, things, like food supplements, unfortunately, uh, they want to sell. So they might, very often will not give you the whole story in their YouTube videos. They'll leave some things out or they'll exaggerate the benefits of the supplements. Since I don't sell supplements, I'm not associated with any supplement company, I do not have that problem. In other words, you will not hear any BS from me about supplements that work, which really don't. In my new, in my Applied Metabolics, I have articles exposing fake and phony supplements, including some of the most popular supplements you could think of that turn out to be not as good as you think they are. I have no access to grind, and again, I'm not paid off. I'm not some shill. You see a lot of those guys too, where you know they'll, they'll extol the values. Uh, um, <laughs> this is especially true with them. Um, I've been looking at some of these uh, anti-aging videos, and uh, you know if you, these people are all paid off by supplement companies that sell extremely expensive so-called anti-aging supplements. They either give them a bunch of free supplements or they pay them off. And these people push their supplements. To me, that's dishonest. They're shills. That's all. You'll never see me do that. I don't even like to mention you know, commercial products in my videos. In my newsletter, I only use generic names, protein supplement, saw palmetto supplement. You'll never see me use commercial names because I'm not a shill, an unpaid shill for supplement companies. And I tell it as it is. So if you want 100% honesty and truth, and you also want to take advantage of my 60 years of experience in, in both the gym and in academic study, my own study. Uh, you know, you'll more, more find that level of experience anywhere else. It's in Applied Metabolics. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. And by the way, you won't see most of what I write, nearly all of it, and it appears in Applied Metabolics, is not what you'll find in videos, not what you'll find in websites. It's kind of off-the-road stuff. But I guarantee you will learn something from every issue of Applied Metabolics. It's not expensive at all. It's dirt cheap. It's 33 cents a day. And let me tell you, if you can't afford, I mean, I know times are hard. I know things have gone up in price, you know. But if you can't afford 33 cents a day, you must be living in a tent. That's all I could say. But anyway, uh, take care. And uh, that's all I have. To, oh, by the way, when you subscribe to Applied Metabolics, uh, if you send me a request, I'll, 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 I'll send you a uh, offer uh, or an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general medicine. Really good stuff, if I say so myself. I mean, uh, with this subscription, you get all the information, 30 to 40 pages, every, uh, 30 to 50 pages every month in Applied Metabolics, plus you get a ton of other information on my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. And I'm talking about useful and practical information, not this, you know, impractical stuff that is interesting but you can't use. I don't deal with that stuff. I can't see the point of that. I want to give information that you could use right now, today. And that's what I have in the Facebook page. That's what I have in Applied Metabolics. Uh, there's also an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website. That's exclusive for only current subscribers of Applied Metabolics. I don't accept unsolicited questions. Uh, I answer questions from subscribers as a appreciation of their subscription uh, or, or my support of my work in Applied Metabolics. But however, you're welcome to leave comments under these videos. Anything that you might have, uh, you know, any questions you, uh, you might have, uh, I, I probably 
won't answer because I don't have time. But anyone else, hey, you know, jump in. If somebody asks a question under one of my videos and you have the answer, feel free. Feel free to answer them, please. But if you have any, uh, what I'm asking for is any ideas for, you know, if you have any topics that you want me to discuss in a future video, again, feel free to list them in the comment section. Uh, uh, as I said, this video itself on Sal Palmetto was the result of a comment. Somebody asked for a video on Sal Palmetto, so I do respond to those. Uh, uh, if I feel that the topic has enough interest to enough people, I will, I will try to do a video on it. Also, if you think that my videos, which I post every Tuesday, every week on my, my channel, this channel, uh, if you think they're of use to you or be of use to others, uh, please subscribe and tell others about my channel so we can grow a little bit. Uh, I, there's no dancing girls on here. There's no fancy cartoon videos. But what I am giving you is the 100% truth based on science and also my own empirical knowledge of, of again, six decades, which is very rare. So I, 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 speaking for myself, I would rather have this type of information than a bunch of fancy graphics, you know, or skinny guys with abs and 14 inch arms telling you how to train. But, but that's just me. <laughs> anyway, take care. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog.